most of Asia's major river systems, in fact, all except one, originate from the same region, the Tibetan Plateau. This kind of Chinese chokehold on transnational water resources resulted not because of geography, but because of guns. Asia's water map changed fundamentally after the 1949 communist takeover in China. Another large territory that uh, China forcibly absorbed, Xinjiang, is the source of river flows to Russia, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. Today, natural resources are the center of the various Asian conflicts. The size of land in dispute is often secondary to the size of potential resources at stake. For example, the islands that are currently at the center of the Japan-China tensions in East China Sea, the Sankaku slash Dayu Islands, they occupy an area of only seven, seven square kilometers, but their surrounding seas supposedly hold immense hydrocarbon resources. But in a future world, if water were to emerge as a physical commodity-based asset class, that is, a widely traded commodity internationally, it would open the door to some Western countries meeting some of the water demand in the East. In this scenario, water-rich Canada, the Nordic countries, and Russia would be well-placed to cash in on their blue gold wealth by emerging as the Saudi Arabias of the freshwater world. But at present, Canada is unwilling to sell its surplus freshwater even to next door United States. It's willing to sell its oil from, extracted from tar sands of Alberta, but not fresh water, even though water is a renewable resource and found in abundant quantities across large parts of Canada. One indication of how the water situation has changed fundamentally can be seen from a sobering, sobering reality. The retail price of bottled water is already higher than the international spot price of crude oil. I'm not even talking about glacial water or other high-end mountain spring water. I'm talking about plain bottled water, like the Aquafina and uh, the Sunny brands that you see in a New York convenience store. The price of plain bottled water, which is tap water or ground water, subjected to reverse osmosis, such plain water already sells at a higher price than crude oil in the international spot market. Is it therefore any surprise that many investors are looking at water as the next big investment opportunity, as the new oil of the 21st century? But unlike oil, water has no known substitutes, making it more valuable from a long-term investment perspective. In fact, the rise of the bottled water industry since the late 1990s, that is in the last 15 years, is itself a testament to how the golden age of cheap, bountiful water has come to an end, replaced by a new era of increasing supply and quality constraints. Now, this is the situation globally. Imagine how much worse the situation would be in Asia, where the per capita freshwater availability is not even half the global average. Water in the 21st century could easily become what oil was in the 20th century, a source of both wealth and conflict. What has contributed to Asia's water crisis? One obvious factor is Asia's dramatic economic rise, which has brought water resources under increasing strain. There are also other equally important but less known factors. One such factor is irrigation, 
which has proven to be both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because Asia used to be a continent plagued by serious food shortages until the 1960s. Then on the back of an unprecedented irrigation expansion, Asia emerged in less than one generation as a net food exporter. Between 1960 and 2000, Asia doubled its irrigated acreage. Today, Asia is the irrigation hub of the world. 72% of the world's total irrigated land is just in one continent, in Asia.